What's up, YouTube? It's your boy Sticks, and I'm back with a reaction video. Hey, check this out. If this is the first time you're coming across my channel, do me a favor, hit that like and subscribe button. It would help out the channel, and I'd greatly appreciate it. On this channel, we talk about everything locked up related. And today, I got the jailhouse snitch. Yup, I haven't watched it yet, but supposedly he's a snitch for hire. And he loves getting information and telling it to the cops. Remind you of somebody we know? <laughs> Let's go. What's that? What am I doing here? Well, you apparently wanted to talk to us about some information regarding some somebody you talked to in here about uh, a homicide. So, what what did you want to tell us? Are you guys talking about uh, Mr. Aiken? Sure. If that's what you're talking about. Yeah, I don't know which one you guys are talking about here. How many people have talked to you about homicides in here? Just him. Okay, then probably that one. So what, what, what is it that you wanted to tell us about it? Uh, what he told me was what he'd done was very rude and wrong. And, you know, even telling me what this guy, he even spoken him out for a minute. That he did tell me that even. And the reason why he did it, he's a bum, he said, no one cares for him. Okay, walk me through this. So, how long ago did he, did you guys have a conversation about this? Like uh, a couple months ago. Okay. And where were you when it happened? Right in jail. Well, I know that, but where? I was like talking to him, like, like through his cupboard. Okay. So he was inside his yeah. cell, and you were outside of his cell. Right. And how did the conversation start? Just talking about like Trinity and stuff like that. Uh, then he asked me what I was in here for. I told him what I was here for. Then uh, he told me what he was here for, how it happened, why it happened. And you know, he said it's just, just shady shit he did. And Clint died in Montana, where he used to work at, I guess. Mm -hmm. He said he did some shady specific about the conversation you had with him through the cuff port what did what exactly did he say talking and saying that the guy that he shot him and his co-defendant his co-defendant he said did not touch him and do nothing like that because they were drinking that day traded him a gun for another like a couple other guns he got that day from him and he traded him for a 45 I guess who was his co-defendant uh Corey Fitzwater. Okay. Have you talked to Corey? I haven't talked to Corey. Uh, but I've been talking to Dalton here and there. What else did Dalton say? Dalton said what he exactly was. Did he? Does he feel like shit for doing it? Yeah, but like he said, he has no one to worry about him. He just did them a job, basically. He lived on the streets. Didn't give a shit. And, uh, that's just, that was just his thing for a while, just to kill someone. I uh -huh. And what he said was, he was basically cleaning up the streets that day. You said he basically said that. Did he actually say that? He said that. He does. What were his actual words to you? He said, basically what I was doing, just cleaning up the streets. Okay. Did yeah. he say anything else? Then I was like, how do you feel about that? He's like, I feel okay about it. He thinks he'll get out of it. And what I said is, do you believe in God or stuff like that? And he said, yeah, I believe in God. But I feel that uh, God wanted me to do that to him. Okay. And you know, he's... And then what happened? Then after that, we just stopped talking. Stop talking about the case. Okay. Well, is he still here? Yes, he is. And so do you still talk to him? Yeah. And do you ever talk about the case? Mm, he brings it up mostly. 
Yeah. And what has he said about it since that? Eh, you know, if he had the chance to go back in time, he'd probably do it again to another person. And he said that to you? Yeah. You know, he said he's... You never know the type of people you're going to run across in lockup. This guy right here could be facing a little bit of time or something. Could possibly be making up a story. Or maybe he really did tell him that. This guy's putting some extras on it to tell the investigators so he could get less time or get out of his charges. You never know which way these situations really go. But for the simple fact that he volunteered up his information, his time, everything like that, it seems like he's looking for a plea deal, something like that. Now, if there was kids involved or a lady or something, I could see him doing it, like, because he's a big-hearted guy, something like that. But these snitches right here, you never know what their motive is. Can you really even take them on their word? That was his thing. I don't know why. That was just his thing that he wanted to do. What was you said? He you mentioned that he'd done it in another place. He said he did some shady shit. Where? What's the shady shit? Glendive, Montana. Glendive, Montana. Yeah. Are you familiar? I know you're from Montana. Are Are you familiar with Glendive? Mm, not really. I just stopped there for gas and that's it. Okay. Every time when I was there. You know, he said he just did some very shady, horrible shit over there. Okay. And I was like, what, do you, what did you do? It's too horrible. I can't even. I was like, is that horrible than this? He said, yeah. And he said, when it happened, I immediately jumped back here in Utah. It took me like two days to get back home. Okay, so what did he tell you specifically about this one and how it happened? What it happened was... Did he say where it happened? It was in a uh, park, I believe, he said. Okay. Okay. He was drinking that night, and he... Because he had, like, five or six bullets in his pocket and some inside a chamber, I guess. He was planning to do more. If Corey wasn't with him, he was planning to shoot a couple more people. Because, like he said, they're bums. They had nothing to live for. Okay. Just doing, doing them a favor. Okay. And specifically, what did he tell you he did? He told me he pulled the trigger and blew one guy's head. Okay. And did he say anything else specifically about it? He felt good about it doing that. Okay. Did he say what he did after? He just left and someone, some other person, I don't know who it was that contacted the police. He said he doesn't know who did it. Okay. Can we talk outside real quick? Yeah. Well, who was he? Who was he told us? Did, 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 
Did he do? Did he do the shooting? Well, no, I'm asking you. Did he tell you what he told us? Why he's locked in there? Yeah, he told me that time. Next time, he told me why he was in there for. Said that he seen the bomb that night. He were drinking. But and did he tell you who he told police did the shoot? No. He why said did, he did it. Why do you think Cortez Waters locked up? Why? Because he wanted to know who did Dalton Aiken. Okay. So why do you think Dalton would confide in you, a stranger, that why? he's the one who did the shooting? Why would he tell me he did it? Because he said he's going to be going to prison. I said, how long are you going to be going to prison for? He said either 15 to life or 25 to life. I was like, what'd you do? He says, I went, had a gun that night, and I had some bullets. No, that's not the question I asked. That's not, I'm getting to that question. Okay. He told me that time why he was in there for, how it all happened, and why he did it. Man, this kid can't even talk. Like, he's not credible. He's not a credible witness at all. And if the man did want to get something off his chest and he just so happened to tell this wimp weirdo dude about it, then that's his own bad. But this guy couldn't go on the stand and talk. He can't even speak to investigators. He's going in circles and just keep saying the same thing there's no real big evidence here or nothing like that it would just that still doesn't answer my question why would he tell you with a stranger it was like told him my charge no one else inside the pod told him their charges according to the last person that I talked to everybody I don't talks know about the charges I don't know who the last person definitely what about him? He says everybody talks about the charges. Not I. Not a few people inside here. We don't talk about charges. Well, I've got another guy who's in your pod who says everybody talks about their charges. That's why, you know, every The reason does why we don't talk about our charges because a lot of people go and try to get a better deal. And we don't talk about our charges, especially in and my I, case. Is this what you're trying to do here? No, I'm yep. just doing the right thing. You, you haven't know. asked for a, a deal. No, I never asked. The last it. investigator you talked to with the defense attorney, you didn't ask for a deal? The only, I talked to Robert Brunson, and I gave him information. And you didn't ask for him for a deal? Pretty sure I didn't. I just asked. I have that recorded conversation. I listened to it before I talked to you today. You wanted to regurgitate what you said? Please. You said, I'm looking for a deal. And I didn't say in exchange for information for uh, for this for what you call it. Did I say giving you guys information what he gave me? You talk. To so this kid runs around the pod trying to soak up people's charges and information, so he could run back to the investigators, tell them any little information he's got, put some extras on it. So he could try to get a better deal on his case. A straight rat. Jailhouse snitch. This is exactly what a rat is. Right here, you're seeing it. Robert Brunson had said that you wanted... I gave deal. him information to tell him that this person told me what he'd done, how it all happened. That's what I told Robert Brunson. He asked me too. That say, he says, would you want a great deal for this? I said, yeah, sure. Okay, well, that's want, semantics. I want don't, a great don't, deal. Don't, dude, you're, dude, that's semantics, okay? Don't act like your mother Teresa and you just came forward out of the goodness but of here's your thing, own heart. If it's a, How did you even get contacted by Robert Brunson? How? Yeah. I don't know how. How do they know you knew this? How did they know that you knew this? How did they know? We talked to Dalton. That's not Dalton's attorney. I understand that. So how did you get contacted by Robert Brunson? I do not have a clue. Who did you tell that you knew information about Dalton? No one else. No one else? Well, then how did they even know to contact you? How? I do not have a clue. That's the thing I don't understand. Hmm. How okay. did Robert, you know, I, I'm done talking to you. Okay, that's fine. Look, 
even the cops don't take this guy serious. <laughs> oh man, ain't no court of law or a judge going to take this guy on his word. He is obviously trying to knock some days off the calendar. And you never know. You could be locked up, just have a normal conversation with somebody, and they run to the investigators and say, Hey, he told me this, he told me that. Really, he never even said nothing. And they bring this guy into court to testify on you as a witness. Not a credible witness, but now it's your word against his word. Starts a big old case, a big deal. And you never know, an innocent person could be getting locked up for life all because this guy wanted six months off of his three-year sentence. The game is dirty. I'm telling you, the game is rigged. Till next time, hold your head and stay out of lockup.